Drift Tech 101. I'm gonna teach you guys how to mount a tire real quickly. Cause Chandler, who we brought to Japan, who won our Texas Street Legal Series and has been drifting forever, and lots of other guys always get their tires changed by everyone else, even if they're really good tire or drifters because it's just easier to have someone else do it. But at Matsuri here, you have to do it yourself, so I'm gonna teach you real quick. So first of all, you need a tire core remover thingy, valve core remover. So you're just gonna put this right here. Right. You're gonna jam it in there and unscrew it. That's gonna let all the air out of the tire and allow you to de-bead and dismount and all that stuff to the tire and take it off the wheel, which is step number one. All right. So then don't lose this thing. I'm gonna slip it in my back pocket. Don't lose it and also don't lose this tool. I'm gonna to toss this tool down to the machine. Now that the air is coming out, I've already done this one and we're gonna dismount this tire real quickly for you. So first of all, we need to take the tire off the wheel and put a new tire onto the wheel. We need to get the bead off of this wheel by pushing it in and popping it off. And we need to do that on both sides all the way around. This is the tool to do it. It's like a tire shovel. I don't know what the technical term is. I'm gonna put this right here. I'm gonna push this in. Ah. This is the tire machine. It has a big wheel spinny thing. It grabs wheels, it does all this stuff. This spins it one direction. This spins it the other direction. This operates the shovel, which I'm gonna do in a second. This is the grabber. So if you watch that, it's gonna grab, and you can grab the wheel from the inside to the outside. And then this does this guy. This whole thing comes down. Pretty easy, and then it goes back up. So let's first use the tire shovel, which means I put my foot on this, I aim over here, and I pull it in. It's gonna pop off the bead. So it just popped off the bead inside. Look in here real quick. So there's an outer bead right here, a little wheel surface, and then a little piece to grab it. And then this goes way in here so that you can slide the tire across it more easily and you'll see that in a minute. Okay, let's break this tire off real quick. Okay, it's off all the way around on that side. Flip it around, do it again. You can see here that this tire was a front, I think, and we were using the brakes and we actually, at angle, caused the tire to um, get shredded a bit right there. So that's a front tire on the brakes problem. Keep spinning it around. One little bit right here. Okay. I'm gonna set these over here for a second. Now we have a quick decision to make. It's to grab the wheel from the outside or the inside with these little guys. You can do it either way. Now it's a claw mechanism on one side to grab this part of the wheel. And on this side, it presses out. Depending on what kind of wheels you have and how you wanna scratch them and do all that stuff, you kind of make your choice. But I like to just pick it up, set it right there in the middle, look down this way side, and then I press this foot pedal over here, and it goes and it grabs it. So now the claws are pulling out, and the wheel is secure, and isn't going to move. Okay? Now, what we need to do is we need to yank the wheel off the, the tire off the wheel, and you can't physically do that because the wheel is kind of too big and the tire is too small to get it. So we have to push it down and get it below the bead where the wheel is actually smaller. So see how the wheel is smaller? We have to get the tire to push into that and then pull it off this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down. <clears throat> this is adjusted for a different size wheel right now. So depending on how this machine works, I'm gonna push it down, pull it over, secure it here. Okay, now I've locked this mechanism right here with this. Each machine is a little bit different, but you get the gist of it. I'm gonna grab a tire spoon. The tire spoon has a hook end and the S end. Right now we're gonna hook it and we're gonna put it in this way. And now we're gonna pull off the tire. Now I'm gonna do it wrong real quickly to show you, but if you just sit here and pull, you're eventually gonna get it, but it might take too much force. 
So what you do is you press down gently right here to push the tire down, and the tire has to go below this mounting surface of the bead, and then you just pull it right up. Now, if I go forward, this is gonna slip off and it's not gonna work, so I'm gonna do it to show you. See how it didn't work? So what I'm gonna do, also I could be totally wrong at mounting tires, but this is, I've mounted thousands of tires, I'm just showing you how I do it. Okay, you go up like that. Now I'm gonna back it this way and it gets it on top of this. And now, oh, I missed it. Let's do it again. So I'm gonna back it up a tiny bit. Come on, get up there. There, now it's on top of that and that's what we needed. So now I'm gonna go the other direction and it's gonna pull the tire right off the beat. So if you watch this side, it goes around, no problem. Super easy, okay. Now what we need to do is we need to yank the whole tire up. So this side needs to be high and I need to mount, grab the bottom bead with this hook. So I'm gonna toss it down in there. I'm gonna grab it. Now I can physically feel it down here. I'm gonna yank the whole tire up. Okay, we've yanked the whole tire up. We've got that. It has to be over this, which it is, which is this duckbill. Make sure not to get any of your fingers stuck anywhere and get them ripped off by this machine. And I'm gonna go forward and pull this little guy off. See how easy that is? Super easy. Okay. Now I take this off and I have a tire that's dismounted. I'm gonna go throw this in this pile. Someone's gonna see this tire and be like, that thing has tons of life and they're gonna go steal it. And they're gonna recycle it and use it. Well, I am going to take this tire and put it on this wheel. Now, first off, we don't need any lube on the Kenda because it's super easy to mount. So I am basically gonna just toss this on and we need to figure out what direction it's gonna go. Um, I'm gonna ignore that problem for the first tire I mount. I'm gonna set it here like this. In this position, this is gonna let this whole duckbill thing come back down. And that's what I need right now. So I'm gonna do that. Bam, okay. Now, the next important lesson is, let me show you real quick. There's this piece, which the tire is gonna fit on and slide around, and there's this piece. So the tire right now needs to go over that piece and under this piece. So it goes over and under. So see how it's at an angle side? Yep. okay. Now back off a little bit and let's see this. I'm just gonna pull it on a little bit. Now the tire is about halfway on. Now, we're going to just turn the table by pressing with my foot, pops right on. Now we need to do the exact same thing again. And depending on what kind of tire you have, it could be really easy or uh, you know, really hard. If you have a very low profile tire, it can be super hard to get on. What we're gonna do is grab two tire spoons. We're gonna use these ends this time. I'm gonna angle this right here. And what I need to do with this spoon is I, I need to keep it above that piece and under this piece. So this spoon right here is gonna be moving and this one is gonna hold this on so this one does not move. So I'm gonna use a foot pedal. I'm gonna go a little bit. And now if I didn't move this spoon, this would fall off. I keep this spoon right here. I go a little bit more. I move this spoon. I go a little bit more. I move this spoon. I go a little bit more. I move this spoon. I go a little bit more, I move the spoon. Okay, now it's important right down here that this tire stays low, which it should naturally do. But if it doesn't, we're gonna screw this up and we're gonna stretch this tire too hard. Okay, we're going well. We're going well. You can tear this bead if you screw up, so be careful. We're going, we're going, and it's on. Super, super easy. Let's set the, the tire spins over here. Now pop this up. Whoops, I did the wrong thing. That's okay, I ungrabbed the wheel. I'm just gonna grab it back up for putting air in it. Now, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put this on here. And this is going to bead the tire, which has set it from here to here. And now I'm gonna try and make it screw up on purpose. So sorry, let's make it screw up right here. So if I give it air, which is on the machine over here, the air is escaping and not going in the wheel because it's flipping out right here. Does that make sense? Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work the wheel around to try and make sure there's no gaps a little bit. 
without sticking my fingers in the mounting surface. Uh oh, we screwed that up too much for the demo. <laughs> now he screwed up Let's for real. Fix it. <laughs> now I just need to pull up on it really hard. Okay, so this is good. We have a problem. So now let's just diagnose it. I'm gonna disconnect this. I'm gonna look at it. So somewhere along this bead somewhere, it's not working properly. So I'm gonna set it down on the ground, bounce it a little bit. <laughs> See if that centers the wheel on here. And if you have a very narrow tire on a big wheel, you're gonna have a lot of problems with this. And if you have a very fat tire on a little wheel, you're gonna have no problems with this. Okay. So it's blowing out right here, I can feel it. And you'll see there's a dent here. So somebody put a big dent in my wheel, it was probably Chandler. Definitely wasn't me, I would never dent my wheel. So I'm gonna pinch this a little bit, which is pushing the tire down, and now it's taking air. I'm gonna move my hand off that so it doesn't pop too hard, but that's all it took. You see how I diagnosed where the air leak was from? And then I grabbed it. Somebody did to my wheel, Mark. You. It wasn't me. Okay. So it's now mounted all the way around. Normally it's going to make some really loud pops on you, but this time it did not. So I'm going to take that valve core thingy out of my pocket. It's a little tiny mechanism like this. You line it up. I'm going to look at how much air is on this. Right now we're at two bar, which is 30 PSI, and I don't need that much, but the air is gonna leak out when I do this. I'm now gonna stuff this in. And now it's tight. You don't need to do it really tight, just a little tight. And now we're at just under two bar, which is probably 20 something PSI. I'm gonna take this off. We can now get an air gauge and put it to the proper pressure we want. And we're done, it was that easy. Um, some big problems that we're gonna have arise are going to be when you have too much of a stretch, which means a small tire, like a 215 on a 10 inch wheel or something, this is gonna be a big problem mounting it. And you're gonna have to use fire or what's called a cheetah, which is one of these guys, which you air up and you, like you put into the rim and you explode and you push a bunch of air in there and try and pop the bead up but you're gonna need to have an experienced tire mounter there with you for your first time. Um, and then if you're using like a flammable liquid, you're gonna have to get something very explosive, not gasoline, but like a brake cleaner or something like that. It's like non-chlorinated or like a specific, like very flammable version, not like one of the low flammable versions. Um, we do run, this is, we're in Japan. Uh, Lone Star Drift is sponsored by Kenda. But uh, everybody uses Kenda tires here. It's kind of just the thing that lasts the longest. Um, there's a Kenda plug. I don't know why there's wheel weights on this. I've literally never balanced anything on these before. We should probably rip them off. But we bought these at Up Garage and they probably came that way. Uh, so there we go. Let's get these on the car and go drift. Boom. Easy. Here you go, Chandler. Thank you. Yeah. I want to give a huge shout out to What Monsters Do for making our Japanese content possible and Inky Wheels. If it was not for them, because this content is so expensive to do in Japan, we would not be able to do it. Thank you so very, very much. Go to their website, buy some merchandise. Here's a discount code for 20% off so you can save some money. It's Ebisu.